Good afternoon. My name is Joyce Borenstein. I'm a filmmaker and I'm here this afternoon at the Red Roof Church uh, to do an interview uh, with Professor Norm Cornett. He'll be asking the questions and uh, about the film Lita Moser Photographer. Thank you, Ms. Bornstein. What strikes me from the get-go in your animated documentary, Lita Moser, Photographer, An Odyssey in Black and, Black and White, is that you refer to Quebec, where we are right now, um, as my province. There is a sense of home. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, yes, well, I was born here in Montreal, uh, but to immigrant parents, not to uh, vieille souche uh, francophone parents. And so, uh, growing up, there was always the two solitudes. Uh, the immigrants back then learned English and uh, um, were surrounded, uh, took on the anglophone culture where and were living separately uh, from the uh, Quebecois uh, de Vieille Souche. And so uh, having made the doing while I did this film, I really got to know my province from a different perspective mm. and it was very enlightening for me to have made this film. And when you mentioned the two solitudes, you're referencing, of course, the seminal work of Hugh McClellan, uh, which he wrote in the wake of World War II. How could we explain this demarcation, this divide, almost a chasm, right here in Montreal between Anglophones and Francophones? You have lived on that tightrope, have you not? Yes, I have, and um, and I was oblivious, in fact, to that that chasm until Rene Levesque, Rene Levesque came on the scene and insisted that if you want to keep living in Quebec, you have to learn the language, and and so I was curious, and uh, I said, okay, I will learn it. I mean, I'd study it. Mm -hmm. uh, in grade school and into high school, but never really practiced it. And I was also, by nature, a shy person, so I, I really couldn't speak it very well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, by 1976, I, I realized now's the time. And then, uh, so my French, my French improved, uh, it leaped forward, and then I had a Francophone boyfriend, which helped a lot, uh, um, because it was conversational, and he had a Hungarian French accent, so people thought I was of, of Hungarian roots. I was speaking French with a Hungarian <laughs> accent, but no, I my roots are more Lithuanian, are Lithuanian and German Jewish. Um, in any case. Um, the next leap forward was while I was making Lita Moser photographer, because she, a New Yorker, uh, Anglophone of course, New Yorker, Jewish, of uh, Ukrainian uh, heritage, her parents, um, came to Quebec on commission to Vogue magazine to do a photo spread on Quebec, mm -hmm. because it was a unique uh, culture, a, a unique place culturally. Uh, and so they paid her train, she arrived in Montreal, and to her surprise, it, it was really very worldly, very European, different from New York in that it was European feeling, and everyone was speaking French, and um, by chance she hooked up with the Minister of Culture, Paul Gouin, introduced herself at a restaurant and he, when he saw her, a young photographer from New York City on commission to Vogue magazine, a light turned on in his mind and said, listen, come with us, we're taking a road trip 
through Quebec and I'll show you my province. And uh, she said, yes, I will. And the, there were four of them who set out in, in a government car uh, in 1950, the summer of 1950, July, and off they went. And uh, so there was Paul Gouin, the Minister of Culture. There was Luc Lacourcière, uh, the absolute brilliant hero of ethnology who founded the ethnology uh, faculty at Laval University and was a professor there who recorded thousands of hours of francophone uh, stories and songs, not just in Quebec, but also in Louisiana and Acadia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe in New England, I'm not sure about that. Anyways, so there was Paul Gouin, Luc Lacourcière, and Abbé Savard for part of the trip. So there were four heavyweights, two, three, three men and one woman, uh, traveling in their car, uh, visiting the villages along the St. Lawrence River, going as far as Gaspé, uh, Perse and around, and, and, and coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the while she was photographing, she took over a thousand mm -hmm. photographs, black and white, exquisite photographs, mm -hmm. two and a quarter inch, uh, and some were four by five, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and it was kind of, in, a, in a certain way, it was scandalous to, for this young 30-year-old uh, Anglophone to be traveling with these three uh, very important men, each at the top of their field. Uh, and one of them a priest, no and less. And one of them a priest. <laughs> and, you know, they pull up into these uh, the rural villages, and it was Catholic and... Uh, very sort of almost 19th century, you know, and it was it, the, the electricity hadn't even come to the, some of these villages. The roads hadn't been paved, so it was really like nine, 1900s instead of like 19, you know, maybe 1890 instead of nine, uh, 1950. It was hadn't yet developed, and uh, and yet she held her own. She was a, a feminist, she was born a feminist, mm. and uh, she, she embraced the uniqueness and the opportunity and uh, did an, an amazing job of uh, photo filming and uh, documenting uh, Paul Gouin's Quebec. Mm -hmm. And I thought this story was amazing. Mm -hmm. Not, the, not only were the photographs exquisite, exquisite, uh, the, you know, all with natural lighting, uh, technically perfect. She was at the height of her powers at mm -hmm. age 30 mm -hmm. during that summer. Uh, they were infused with love. Mm -hmm. uh, love for the people she met. I think she even loved Paul Gouin. Uh, uh, love in love with the culture, in love with the art that she was shown along the way, the the church art, and uh, so, and then I had her in person as an older lady remembering. Mm -hmm. So the soundtrack is uh, very very enriched by a, a first person uh, memory of. Mm -hmm what she lived during that summer. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I thought it was uh, like I had all the uh, like amazing ingredients uh, mm -hmm. to be making a film. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And when you use the expression vieille souche, we're referring here, of course, to traditional uh, francophone Canadians. And it's most interesting to me, and I surmise that one of the reasons Vogue commissioned her is arguably the most important work ever published at the time in English was Mason Wade's The French Canadians in two volumes, which happened to proceed just about the same time as she gets the commission. Uh, and this became the benchmark for understanding the other 
on the Canadian side of the border of New York, of Maine, of, of, Mass, uh, of Vermont, of New Hampshire. Very, very interesting how such a publication and Mason Wade actually want, wanted to understand, as did you, McClellan, in the wake of World War II, how could there be on our doorstep a people of another language, of another culture, of another religion? And I'd like to go back when you mentioned Lita Moser as New York American Jew of a Ukrainian uh, heritage, we talked about the two solitudes. But in reality for yourself, as someone born of Jewish immigrant parents from Eastern Europe, do you think we can speak about a third solitude, about it being an Anglophone Jew in Montreal? That's why when you open Lita Moser, photographer, an odyssey in black and white, I did my PhD in history, albeit history of religions, and I see how much interest you as an Anglophone Jewish Montrealer have in my province. Mm. Did you live do you consider this your way of coming to terms with, with what I would call the third solitude? Hmm. Yeah, very well put. Uh, yes, um, I, I didn't know that at the time when I began the movie, but looking back, um, I realized that uh, in making this film, um, I got to understand and learn and even love uh, my homeland. Um, you know, I mean, technically, uh, my French improved because I was working in French, writing in French, uh, reading in French. Um, and uh, so that was... Uh, a road in as well, of mm -hmm. course, to, to speak the language fluently. Um, um, a, a kind of fringe benefit for having made the movie. Uh, and I think, um, well, my all, all our summers were spent in rural Quebec, uh, in a little old schoolhouse in between St. Agathe and St. Lucie. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was rural Quebec, and that, those were the happiest days of my life. You know, from July and August mm -hmm. up until Labor Day, we were there um, near St. Lucie. And um, we played with um, kids, Francophone kids uh, of farming families. And so her, it's partly that her photographs recalled my idyllic summer days, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, and my father, who was a painter, um, often painted villages and the, these villages mm -hmm. and the, the, the people, um, so it, my father in a way was doing, way, uh, my father was doing what Lita did, um, the Lita did it condensed into a few mm -hmm. weeks. My father did it each summer from 1950 till 1966. Uh, but not through a camera, not by mm -hmm. photo ph photographing, rather through painting mm. and portraits and landscapes. George Borenstein, you used a very important word, a very loaded word, a word fraught with significance, consequences, and implications. Um, you use the word homeland. Quebec is my homeland. 
I did my PhD on the relationship between religion, culture, and politics in the history of French Canada and its tr transition to modern, if not postmodern, secular uh, Quebec. I have rarely encountered someone who's an Anglophone, someone who is a Montrealer, and someone who is Jewish, saying Quebec is my homeland. That's a bold statement. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I've had, I guess, a happy life here, yeah. and I find that it's an opportunity to have enriched who I am by learning another language, and I'm thankful that I had the brain power to be able to do that, and uh, yeah, I just um, I'm very proud of where I'm living, and um, and Le doing the film on Leader Moser brought that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was unconscious. Mm. Almost as if the photography of Leader Moser, and I'm fascinated by your. You, the parallel you establish between the paintings of Sam Bornstein and the villages of what was known until the Quiet Revolution as French Canada and how you perceived her photography and your father's paintings as a dialogue mm. of your homeland. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, um, in fact, when I started making the film, I had no idea that, that I'd bring out the, that I'd bring out the theme of an outsider looking in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it only evolved as I was making the film, this idea that, um, you know, I, I open the film with the binoculars and I'm, um, looking at the horizon and um, um, you know I had uh, and in fact I, I uh, we retraced Lita's steps mm -hmm. with our car took two and a half times so mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. helped to um, really connect me to the land mm -hmm. and the people um, so it was more than just a filmmaking experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, um, it became very emotional. Do I understand correctly, Joyce Bornstein, that through the process of making Lita Moser photographer, an Odyssey in black and white, you yourself went from outsider to insider in yes, Quebec? Yes, I, I feel more more as an insider, uh, um, I do, although I'm not sure that, unfortunately, a francophone see me as an insider, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, which is saddening, but, you know, I'm doing my best to uh, connect. Yeah, there, there is... When I look at your films, uh, and specifically here, this is what led to our initial collaboration, um, our dialogue about Lena Moser, photographer and Odyssey in black and white, I had the impression the first time I saw it, ironically, a musical metaphor of you two, with or without you, that somehow you had resolved what I would call a dynamic tension of being an Anglophone, of being a Jew in Montreal, in Quebec. Somehow you had brought resolution to this existential 
reality that you live as someone born who's lived their life here that you had brought. It's almost as though it's the coda of your life. Coda is the last bit. Uh, it's the conclusion of a symphonic piece. Well, or... I hope I have many more years to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it's the idea of bringing resolution, of coming full circle. Mm. And, and that's why for me, when you titled it An Odyssey in Black and White, the Odyssey isn't just that of Lita Moser. Exactly. It's the Odyssey of Joyce Borenstein. Right. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes, well, uh, very interesting because as I look back, I see that I do identify with Lita Moser quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, even though we're very different personalities, um, um, we're both artists, and and, um, and I've had a huge struggle of being a woman in a man's world, and being a shy woman, <laughs> and a petite woman in a man's world, and and she suffered greatly, even maybe more so than I did, with th that um, situation. Um, and, um, yeah, so, yeah, I, well, I, I make documentaries that they have to be personal, you know, um, because, um, uh, those are the kind of documentaries I like, so, um, I guess, um, I guess without really knowing it, I, I identified with Lita Moser. At first, I didn't know it. I, I, but unconsciously, I was identifying with her mm. and admiring what she did, mm -hmm. and maybe wanting to do something as great mm -hmm. Mm. by making this film. I, I'd like to close the parenthesis on your opening statement, and it is a bold one. It's almost a manifesto that you make as an Anglophone Jewish woman in Montreal, my province. You're owning Quebec. Mm -hmm. That's big. So I understand that through the filmmaking process of Lita Moser, a photographer, photographer Odyssey in black and white, you acquired a sense of place that somehow was mercurial or ambivalent or equivocal, but now it's settled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I constantly worry that, you know, Frank Holmes may not want me around. <laughs> And, um, which is, you know, very painful. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, you know, I was born here. I am a very functional citizen who pays her taxes. Um, I, lear I learned French. I made this beautiful movie on their history. Um, you know, I feel like I've earned and um, I keep trying to build bridges. Well, permit me to say, in conclusion, Joyce Borenstein, through your film, Lita Moser, photographer and odyssey in black and white, you have carved out a place, a space in Quebec society. Oh. And for that, we thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes.